And I believe we're live. Uh, hey, Gadget Groupies, ladies and gentlemen. I have a brand new live streaming setup that I'm still trying to uh, get the hang of. I'm still trying to work out all the kinks. So I thought, what better way to break in this uh, hey, new Gadget hardware than to uh, <laughs> check this out? And I have a video playing in the background of myself. So that's terrible. I'm going to pause that right now. Apologies. I always I always forget one thing whenever I start a live stream. But yes, new hardware. I'm trying to break it in. And I want to talk about my favorite tech stories for the first week of September, starting September 1st. And I want to kick things right off with a pair of stories about Uber. Uber. Um, I just came back from Germany. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. So first of all, we've got some good news, bad news going on with Uber. Let's start with the bad news. This is a story coming out of Engadget. Um, that I just thought was kind of interesting. I'm going to switch over into a screen share here and share that. So Uber is under federal investigation for spying on Lyft drivers. It's no big surprise that I, I think a lot of people out there know that when it comes to ride sharing services, ride sharing apps, that a, a lot of these drivers are double dipping. They they probably have accounts on both Uber and Lyft. And uh, you know, Uber, as we know, is a very tech savvy kind of company, and uh, they are finding ways to track information even when it's not an Uber ride. Apparently, there were some uh, some security holes in Lyft's app that Uber was able to take advantage of, and now. Now we're trying to see, you know, uh, federal investigators are trying to see, did this constitute an actual breach? Did this act constitute an actual data security issue? And are we talking about some kind of industrial espionage situation, which I just think is hilarious because Uber has already had a pretty rough year uh, in terms of negative press, not, not just uh, stories about a toxic work environment, but then also uh, accusations of foreign bribery that they have uh, improperly utilized IP from Google for self-driving cars. And so they they uh, have taken steps recently. Uh, the, uh, the CEO, what was his name? Travis, Travis Kalanick. I've never known how to pronounce his name, has stepped down. They do have a new CEO. And maybe one of the things that they're trying to do to revitalize revitalize their image to improve their image is our next story which i'm going to switch over to right here and this is coming out of the guardian which uh, again good news bad news this is something that i'm actually really stoked to hear from a company like uber and that's uber is mandating london drivers must use hybrid or electric vehicles starting in 2020. I think this is an excellent step in the right direction for a ride sharing service, especially as we're looking at just general consumer trends. When we're looking at, you know, electric vehicles are starting to become more feasible in a lot of urban areas, still have a ways to go for more rural drivers. You know, Tesla has announced a, a, an, an electric semi, which can hopefully improve that situation. But definitely check out that a story from The Guardian. I think one of the interesting things as we're looking at some of these changes um, Uber is looking to devalue some of the other petrol and diesel uh, based uh, based uh, vehicles. So not only are they going to say, well, we want everyone to be on a hybrid or an electric, but they're going to start delisting vehicles from the Uber XL service that are diesel. Um, so again, uh, taking steps to try and improve their image, looking at air quality issues, that's obviously one that I think we're we're all kind of concerned about if we're sort of on this techie end of the can't we all be nice to each other spectrum. I, I like the dichotomy of the stories this week from Uber, though, like uh, Uber spying on Lyft drivers, but we also want to make sure that your air is, is cleaner and safer to breathe. Uh, real quick, shout outs from people that have already jumped in in the live chat. We've got Ed Maudlin at Tech Files. Uh, I, I, I agree. I think this camera is all already uh, a humongous step up from what I was using before. Uh, from Nick, it's 542 here. What are you doing 542 in the morning? You should still be asleep. I don't believe that a 542 in the morning actually exists. Tech for your needs, haven't seen you on this channel for the longest. I've been trying to make sure that uh, we've got vlogs and live streams coming to this channel in supplement as a supplement to my content over at Pocket Now. I've got a hi from India. What's up, India? How's it going? Mark Hamilton, good to see you too. Four people watching, really? Well, nonsensical vids, I have a ways to go and kind of coming back to this audience, especially for live streaming. Sudden Death Gaming, yo, yo, yo. 
And uh, from Karthi Kaya, Uber into the eco-friendly cars is something very encouraging for others. I completely agree, especially as we're hoping to see some transition for these driver fleets into electric vehicles, cleaner air vehicles, and then also that can start to be that i mean if we're if we're talking about a fleet of electric and hybrid vehicles those are the first baby steps towards having a fleet of self-driving vehicles as well um i, I you guys know i've been a huge uh, supporter of the it can wait campaign uh, through at&t and uh, i've also you know have been very vocal about this because I, Something I've been very conscious of, especially when I'm driving around LA traffic with my baby daughter in the back seat, is every time I'm behind the wheel of the car, I witness or I am almost a part of an accident due to some kind of distracted driving. Two days ago, we're driving back in the valley, stop and go traffic, no one's going very fast, but a driver looking at his smartphone takes a really coasting right turn uh, at an intersection and rolls right over a bicyclist. And thankfully, four or five people jumped out of their cars. I was about three cars back. Four or five people jumped out of their cars to try and help this guy. He wasn't seriously injured. His bike was wrecked. But that's exactly what we see every single time we're out in traffic in LA. So if a company like Uber is looking at clean air, and that's the wedge that we can use to start looking into self-driving, I'm going to be all for it. Hey, Fat Produce, greetings, Earthlings. What's up, man? That's my buddy, Andrew. You can catch Andrew and I as we talk uh, the Geek Book Club. We're going to be talking about the three-body problem at the end of this month. So go out, read that book, come back, chat. We want to have a full-on, real, interactive online book club for people to engage with. Uh, this is pretty nice. The quality is much higher than the weekly. This is why I'm testing it out on my channel because we've been having so many problems on the weekly. I want to make sure we have a stable setup so that we can uh, we can bring you guys an even higher quality podcast moving into the future. Um, if you're on your phone while driving, your phone should tase you. Nonsensical vids. I would agree with you. But the problem is then when your phone tases you, you're operating a motor vehicle, so you're even more dangerous. So you're just, and you drive your car into, um, into more people. Uh, from uh, from Carthy again, I'd be it'd be a pleasure if you could make a camera video of old Nokia, uh, latest camera of our smoke. Oh, to do a comparison between Nokias, we actually do have something like that planned, but we've got to get through the onslaught of new phone releases. I finally got myself a Note 8. We've got the V30, the Pixel 2, Electric Boogaloo is right around the corner. So there's going to be a lot of that stuff coming out on Pocket now. So. Um, Let's see, from Fat Produce, everyone should make sure to check if they were affected by the Equifax leaks, and if so, set up fraud alerts on their accounts as soon as possible. That was actually one of my stories, Andrew, so I'm glad you brought it up. Numerous outlets have been covering this hack. Go check your credit information. Talk to your banking institutions. We already made calls. We're with a credit union. We're with a military credit union, so we feel like we were pretty well buffered and guarded, but we are doing our due diligence to make sure that we weren't affected by that. Andrew, thank you so much for bringing that up. That's one of the, the key uh, consumer protection stories of this week. Big hacks, lots of user data out there. Definitely go and make sure that your data is secured. Um, from Devor, three-body problem. Very nice pick. Great new science fiction. Very different from the norm. And from Lou, what's up, Lou Rod? I'm Batman. You'll always be yourself unless you can be Batman and then be Batman. And I gotta go. I gotta go. Keaton bats. I gotta go. The the first Tim Burton Batman. Uh, still my favorite bat si uh, bat symbol. You know this is this is it. You know when it also doubles as the bat wing. My one of my all time favorite toys as a kid. You played with that like all kinds. Had the little grippy claws in the front, and then it took a dive, and I broke off two of the little stabilizer wings, and I was super sad about that. I want to move on to another tech story though. This one, uh, this one, it was more for the clickbaitiness of the title. I just think that kind of stuff is funny when we're talking about very limited scope, but people are making these outlandish claims. Uh, let me let me uh, go back into screen share here. And so this one, uh, <laughs> as we can all know, AMD is absolutely and completely dominating Intel in every price category and segment and uh, carrier and relationship and manufacturing partnership. And that's all a lie. No, this is a story that comes out of Market Watch. I'm sorry, I couldn't help that. It was such a terrible joke. Um, this is a story coming out of Market Watch. Germany's Mind Factory is uh, retail is making their their sales uh, public uh, sales data public. Uh, it's easy for me to say. And what we see is some really interesting trends in the Ryzen sales, and that revenue is actually sided with AMD for the first time 
I think in almost a decade, um, and, and this is again, this is sales data through one retailer. So this really is not indicative of the market as a whole. But what we see is that this is buoyed by the fact that early in August, we finally saw the consumer release of Threadripper. And this is one of the best premium uh, price tier products that AMD has launched, I think maybe ever. You know, again, we wanna talk about tech companies and what they can do to build in margins. And for a while there, AMD's only recourse in combating uh, Intel was to try and fight through thinner and thinner and thinner margins. And that's a beast that's really difficult to tame when you're fighting Intel and Intel can sort of leverage maybe nefariously their manufacturing partnerships to make sure that their chips are used. Maybe they can even potentially subsidize. There have been numerous antitrust and investigations on these major corporations that, you know, how business is actually being done. But really in a sort of straight up apples to apples fight, especially Threadripper against Core i9, we've been seeing phenomenal market progress from AMD. Enough so that, you know, we think, you know, enough so that Intel is actually pushing more aggressively into their release schedule. Was it Coffee Lake, I believe, is going to be the next uh, processor chipset, the next chipset coming out of Intel. But again, this is very exciting news for me, especially because I'm looking at the end of the year of uh, dismantling my Intel workstation. Uh, I call her Alexa. She's under this table right here and uh, rebuilding her with a thread ripper with a thread ripper brain uh, i've already have all the little parts picked out i don't know what video card i want to go with and maybe i can send that out as a shout out to you guys because i'm thinking i might skip amd for the gpu i was really on board um what was it their mid-ranger the 480 but i haven't been super impressed by their high-end options and i think i might end up with an nvidia again maybe a 1080 I, I don't know. I was super upset by the way they handled the 970. I never did get my $20 rebate for the RAM problems that uh, that NVIDIA put out there for the 970. But I, I, I don't know. It's really for me like I need the best possible parts to get my work done. I don't want my computer to necessarily be a space heater. So I think I might have to side Threadripper plus uh, plus a GTX 1080. So we'll see how that goes. Um, Sudden death, sudden death gaming. Get Nvidia 1070 or 1080. Uh, let's see, nonsensical vids. My laptop has an i7 7500U and uh, Omar Baha GPU price bracket. That's just it. I don't know. I'm really looking at this being sort of a refresh build, and I'm probably going to have to drop a couple grand on it. Especially, you know, motherboard, uh, the the Threadripper chipset. Probably have to work on my cooling solutions and then pack a GPU on on top of that. So I don't have a dollar amount set. It's just really how much money can I save before the end of the year, before I have to dump money on Christmas shopping. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I got a 770HQ and a GTX 1070 in my laptop. Not bad. Those are pretty decent specs, especially because I got my Razer. Well, I've got my Razer right here. So I got this Razer just when the 970 came out. Was it the 970M, I believe, is in this? And it's not bad. I mean, it's basically a detuned 960 uh, sort of for a low power option. But it, it, it's been a decent enough machine while editing on the go. You know, I've got to crank out 1080p videos. Occasionally, I try and pump some 4K through it. It just takes a while. Those fans kick on like a blast furnace. So we'll uh, we'll see what I can do to replace that. But the desktop definitely needs to be worked on because I've got a... What do I have in there right now? I don't know. It's one of the six core... You know, it's a dead-end chipset. So I, can't, I, I don't even want to spend money in getting a new Intel uh, CPU in there. But yeah, I've already forgotten because I'm tired. And I'm still kind of jet lagged from Berlin. I'm gonna drink some water. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm super excited because I, I'm not doing a lot of gaming these days, but man, Threadripper looks like it's gonna be, be a beast for video editing. I wanna wrap up news since uh, since Andrew was was helpful enough to, to remind me about Equifax. Um, and again, go check your credit info and make sure all of your personal data is safe. Uh, I want to do this last story here. You know, I'm the father of a very active toddler. And uh, this story uh, popped up on Reddit and it just really, it really tickled the imagination. This is a company called Petite Ply, clothes that grow with your child. Now, I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I am a humongous origami nut. I actually do have a couple little designs of my own. I think I've got the world's best hovercraft, which I think I have a video on this channel. 
<coughs> excuse me, talking about uh, or showing you how to fold what what I think is the world's best origami hovercraft. Um, but I caught this on Reddit, and this just looks super techy kid rad. I mean, look at that as they're pulling and expanding the clothes. So the whole idea is that they're, this this clothing is super modular and easy to fold up because of these built-in pleats. And they apparently have a patent on how to construct this kind of material. Um, but as your child grows, you can expand the clothing to match the growth of your child from three months to 36 months, from three months to three years. Now that is an insane claim because uh, my daughter's almost two and the amount of clothes that we have cycled through already and she's a little big for her age in my family we grow really big first and then just plateau so I, like i was this height in the seventh grade and everyone was like man this kid keeps growing he's going to be a monster athlete and then i just stopped because i was like screw you i'm gonna be a nerd um <laughs> if we could get our hands on something like this i could kind of grow with her and i kind of don't mind the fact that she would look like a little cardassian you know, that's kind of the, like the pleats and stuff make it look like some sort of weird faux Romulan kind of Star Trek uniform. And I would be dooming my daughter to just follow in my geeky footsteps, but we knew that was going to happen anyway, right? So Petite Ply, they just recently won a design award and uh, they were featured in a couple other articles, but that popped up on Reddit and I just thought that was the coolest thing I had ever seen in regards to sort of lifestyle technology. You know, we're only scratching the surface on what we can do to create sort of smarter clothing and especially addressing it from the kid's angle where this could be, you know, it'd be an expensive purchase up front, but then it grows with your kids. So then you're well served. You don't have to buy as many clothes. I can't tell you the number of dinosaur shirts I've bought for my daughter that have been wrecked by, you know, like strawberries. You know, she loves strawberries. She just like smear them all over herself. My, my wife came home and she's like, oh no, did Lex get hurt? And it looked like some sort of crime scene had happened all over my favorite dinosaur shirt of hers. Uh, it's a little girl walking a T-Rex, but we don't have to get into all that. So those are my top stories for the week. I want to kick it back over to the uh, to the live chat here. What were some of your your hottest tech news stories this week? Obviously, we've we've had a lot of uh, a lot of not so great news happening, um, especially in terms of politics, uh, in terms of what what's happening at the FCC these days, and also just sort of disaster news stories. Again, if you were in Houston or if you're in Florida, I hope you're safe. I hope you've got a good bug out bag. Um, this is something that we're going to be, I'm going to be working with Josh Vergara um, from Android Authority and with TK Bay. We're going to be putting together a short little series on disaster tech prep. I know I've been teasing this for a little while. We're actually finally going to be sitting down to do it as soon as we're all back in California again. You know, we're in a very fire prone and also for my, for my friends and family out in Burbank. Um, we just recently faced some really gnarly fires. We face earthquakes out here. Um, those are different sort of situations than if you're in an area that's getting a lot of rain or is getting flooded. So whenever someone puts together one of these kits, it's you know sort of a general overview. You, know, you want band aids, you want food, you want water. But we want to also see if we can work in you know for a different region. What would you want to have in a bag that can get you out of trouble or at least help you manage a, a, you know, a terrible situation for a little bit longer, make you a little bit more comfortable? So definitely be on the lookout for those videos. Um, let's see. They got to be overclockable and have at least a 21 megapixel camera. I'm way behind on this live chat. So let's see what we've got um, from Omar. If money is not an issue or you saved up enough, go for the T, uh, 1080 Ti, which I might be doing. Um, from Vikram, when is the V30 audio review coming up? Vikram, we cannot do a review on beta or, or this is a, what do you, what do you call this? This is a prototype hardware. So we are in talks with LG and as soon as we can get our hands on an actual consumer release for the V30, you guys are going to know about it. We're going to have some, uh, some, you know, more in-depth coverage, charts and graphs, everything that you guys are sort of used to on pocket now when we can talk about that. Uh, I, I can tell you right now though, if you were wanting the best possible headphone audio in a phone, I don't know that you would need to wait for my review. <laughs> on the v30 because even this prototype is totally kicking ass um and then from nonsensical oh yeah v30 audio review now later this afternoon we're gonna have the note 8 audio review that will be going live probably in about an hour from now um from zachron have to go to bed unfortunately but i look forward to seeing the the video hope to see more of these live streams thanks for jumping in man i really appreciate it 
Um, nonsensical vids, I'm really interested to see the new iPhone in a few days. I think we all are. And now it's just the waiting game to see what is it going to mean to have some kind of premium priced phone in this market segment. And uh, that's going to be really, really tricky stuff. So, uh, you know, eh. For as much as I like the Note 8, a part of this discussion, part of this commentary, like I don't necessarily agree with like unbox therapy, right? You know, he has the clickbaity video, don't buy the Note 8. And at the end of a 10 minute video where he's talking about specs and he's comparing it against the Galaxy S8, he makes a conclusion that it's just too expensive. I don't necessarily agree. I feel that there is an argument to be made for a premium price product so long as it's the right fit for the consumer or the demographic that it's trying to approach. That's a really difficult, nuanced conversation to have, though, when we are talking about $1,000 price tags. YouTube drama one versus KBHD. I don't know. I, mean, <coughs> I don't know. There's so much YouTube drama. I did maybe make fun of him a little bit in our podcast in Berlin. So me and Jaime did the Pocket Now Weekly together. And there was just so much conversation about different phones. And I think we can kind of get over that overview video, right? You know, like you pick up the phone and you're like, this has a Qualcomm 835, man. And it's got four gigabytes of RAM. Now that's not as much as some other phones because other phones have like six gigabytes of RAM or eight gigabytes of RAM, but it also has 64 gigabytes of storage. But the four gigabytes of RAM, that's probably not going to be a problem unless you're running apps that really need more RAM. But if you do run apps that need more RAM, well, then you need more RAM. So that's how that goes. And then it also has a really high resolution display. But when I pick up the phone, it feels really nice in the hand. It's got really curved and smooth edges. And it doesn't have any protruding lumps or any razor blades glued to the sides because that would hurt in your hand. And that's not what we want in a flagship phone. You know, it's that kind of stuff. You know, I, it was just, you know, I was kind of pointing out the silliness of how we talk about tech and how we always try and make an event out of every single unboxing or every single piece. But I wasn't really trying to start static with MKBHD because the dude is the best overview kid on the internet, right? You know, like you want that sort of that that overview approach. You want to know what's going on in the phone. You kind of want a few of his little opinions on on what's going on. He doesn't do deep dives, but he's you know, he's probably got the best presentation for just introducing you to a new phone. So that's, that's kind of what I was pointing out, but he was the most obvious target for that kind of discussion. So like I said, I kind of had to take the shot. Um, not UFS 2.1 for the Note 8. I'm going to have to test that out. I don't know what, uh, if it is UFS 2.0 or if it's 2.1. I don't remember them. So this was one of my problems for the Note 8 launch is that they didn't really do any spec sheets. And so, uh, you know, again, the Note 8 launch, like the Galaxy S8 launch, was really very fan service. You know, like, you know, we're Samsung and we're really happy that you uh, you stuck with us and it was really feel good. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll have to see if, if that was uh, if, what, what the deal was there. Um, there was one other tech story I wanted to bring up. And uh, the, um, right, let me see if I can find it here real quick. I'm sorry. I should have had this queued up. Do, do, do. Oh, right. Okay. So um, let me pull this up here. And this is coming out of the BBC. So, okay. So have you guys heard of MoviePass? I have not heard of MoviePass. And uh, this just popped up on my Reddits today. And uh, again, Anything that we can do to sort of change the consumer relationship on things like movies sounds pretty cool. So we've got services like Redbox. We've got services, obviously, like Netflix. Um, so MoviePass has been around for a while, um, but it just recently lowered its subscription rate to $9.95. So you can go to movies. You can go see a movie in a movie theater for a $10 a month subscription. And that, to me, sounds like an actual game changer in how we go and consume content and go and consume movies. So that one was really exciting to me. I don't know if you guys caught that, but if you're into going to see movies, I haven't gone to see as many, like I said, toddler daughter, I don't inflict her on other movie audiences, but that would also be the last story from this week that I wanted you guys to go and check out. And uh, I think we're probably going to go ahead and uh, wrap up this live stream. 
this was a surprisingly successful test. Um, as you know, I've had numerous problems with Google and Hangouts. I, uh, I went through three rounds of tech support with YouTube, only at the end of that to be told, oh, well, your audio problems are a problem with Hangouts, so we can't help you, as if the two weren't related. And so I was really frustrated by that. And so now finding this new solution, I, I, I have a crazy setup now. This is a, a mess of cables and wiring, but it looks like I'll actually be able to come back to this channel, broadcast live, and hopefully that this will be the setup that uh, we're looking at for improving the Pocket Now Weekly. Um, we, we still have to work on Jules' setup because I, I, Jules' internet connection is pretty lame, um, but we'll, we'll see if we can, uh, we can improve the quality there too. But uh, folks, I want to thank you for a successful test. All of this excellent, uh, this uh, <laughs> audio problems you say, LOL. Yes, uh, dev, tons, tons. It's ridiculous. Oh, and Andrew, oh my God, my friends and I are thinking about that service. I, I think I'm going to have to do a video on it. I think I'm going to have to check out MoviePass and see if it actually... Mesk on my desk. Mesk, the mesk on my desk. All right. I don't know how this is going to work because I just have this camera on a flimsy little um, tripod. But that's the review desk right now. So this is all the crap that I'm working on, including old mugs full of half drank cold coffee and phones and cases. I got, look at that and different hand tools, stuff like that. So that's terrible. <laughs> and that that doesn't that doesn't fully describe all of the audio equipment. I have two different audio recorders uh, and an an audio input and then the HDMI feed to my camera and then audio recording cabling cuz I just like I said I just finished the Note 8 audio review. So that that was part of it. That's my shame. I'm, I'm, I hope you enjoyed it. So folks, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this uh, this live broadcast up. I'm thinking I might try and do these the end of the week. We wanna talk tech, obviously all of my phone coverage, that's gonna be over on Pocket Now, but there are so many other tech stories that I just think are interesting as we go through the week and it would be nice to have a place we could talk about them. We could maybe uh, share some frustrations. It's 100 degrees in the valley right now, so even with my air conditioner on, it's I'm sweating like buckets. But um, I'll keep you all posted. Obviously, you can catch uh, catch me on Instagram and Twitter as at some gadget guy. You can support production on this channel by clicking the links below. I've got affiliate links there or also by buying my book, Take Better Photos, Smartphone Photography for Noobs, available on Amazon Kindle. Uh, I want to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel so far, everyone who's been chiming in on the uh, the live broadcasts, and all the people who checked out my vlogs in Berlin. Uh, if you want to see some, some real-world samples from the LG V30, I shot a ton of footage uh, off of that phone and then cobbled it all together for those block for those vlogs, all from the rear camera. So I'm holding it rear camera and you know I can't see the screen. And I think they came out pretty well for vlogs. All right, folks, I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for jumping in and uh, have a great weekend. And if you're in an area that's currently facing some kind of disaster, keep your head down, stay safe, follow emergency protocols, and stock up on food and water. I hope you come out okay. And uh, yeah, we'll do another one of these soon.